Hi, I'm Andre and I'm a black nerd with a review for you, Black Nerd Reviews. Coco, I'm gonna tell you the good, I'm gonna tell you the bad, I'm gonna tell you the nerdy. Coco is a great movie. I really, really, truly enjoyed it. The story is about Miguel. He lives with his family. They're about to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, the day of the dead, but their family has completely banned music. No music allowed. I wonder if they are next to the town that banned dancing and Footloose. It's because they believe that music put a curse on their family, but Miguel doesn't care. He wants to play, particularly because he idolizes this famous musician who's now dead, Ernesto de la Cruz. He gets the opportunity to play Ernesto de la Cruz's guitar, but of course Ernesto is dead, he touched a dead item, so now he gets to go to the land of the dead. The movie kind of goes at a slow pace to get everything set up, but once you get to the land of the dead, it is beautiful, both in story as well as animation. The animation is so good in this movie. The backdrops of everything is so beautiful. The land of the dead looks like an awesome place to hang out. <laughs> like I wish it were or a theme park or just where you go when you dead. You got all these buildings on top of buildings and they're all different colors and it looks very festive. You take a bridge of leaves to get over there. It's just so beautiful. There was a family behind me that was watching. They probably had like three or four kids with them. And what was funny was that every time they would show a shot of the entire city, one of the kids would go, wow! And it was a different kid every time. <laughs> That's how fascinating it was that you could keep showing it throughout the course of the movie and you'd have new people being like, wow, it's amazing. And yes, I was fine with those kids talking because I was at a Disney Pixar film. Like this, this wasn't it, okay? You can bring your babies to Coco. I'm cool with that. Don't bring them to it. There's these animals that they call spirit guides and they're just so colorful. And some of them are big, some of them are small, but they just have these really cool mix of colors or some of them even change colors. It's ugh, nice work. And this was like a small thing, but maybe it was just my animation mind that kind of noticed it. It seemed like the animation that they did for Miguel and for the human characters were a little bit different than the skeleton characters that you meet in the Land of the Dead. Because the skeleton characters are a little bit more, they're bony, so they're a little bit more like moving around. Their body parts, of course, come apart. They gotta do the whole skeleton coming apart gag. But it seemed like their animation was a little bit more squash and stretch, whereas the human characters were a little bit more stiff. Not stiff in a bad way, just in a way to show that they are, are moving a little bit of a different way than the characters who are dead. I thought that was a nice little touch to show the differences between the two. Kind of reminded me of the human characters and the cartoon characters in Bonkers. Once upon a time in Toontown, there was a cat that had it all. Fortune and fame, time in the game, up until he hit the wall. Moving on. And the story is really simple. It's a very classic tale. You've got the kid who wants to do more than what his family allows. you got the trying to get back home. You even got a boy and his dog type story in this with this cute, hairless dog whose tongue is always hanging out. It's kind of like a fairy tale, like someone's telling you a story and you're getting to visualize the story as it's being told, but it just moves at a nice pace. I think I'm just so used at this point to animation animation films constantly feeling that they got to throw things at you somebody moving fast with dialogue or with action there's even a lot of live action movies with CGI they're doing that a lot lately so it was nice that no matter how beautiful or how festive or how much was going on in this movie that it always felt like it was moving at a nice pace so you could just be like ah I'm enjoying this you never feel like frantic with this film and the music is just so beautiful remember me <laughs> I love all the songs in this I'm pretty sure I'm gonna see if they're on Spotify this is the type of movie where you're showing me things that I'm just gonna be honest, I don't see that much of, you know, because the culture is a different culture than mine. But it was interesting to watch it to see what things were different and what things are like, well, we have a version of that that also feels the same. And that's what's so nice about this movie. It's showing so much Mexican heritage and culture and characters, and yet there are some themes in this about family, about living your dreams, about life and death that are very universal. Like it doesn't matter what your background is, you can appreciate this movie and you might learn a little something along the way. Kind of reminds us that no matter where we come from, some of our feelings and emotions are universal. If there was ever a time to be told that to people, <laughs> this would be the time. I feel like there's some people uh, currently that need to go see this, that probably will not go see this, that probably should go see this. I feel like there's some places where this should be a field trip. I've been hearing a lot of stories about people crying in this movie and I didn't do it. I made it through most of the movie not crying. Then there's one scene at the end 
And I was like, dang it, Pixar, dang it, Disney. You get up there, and it just kept coming down. Remember me. <laughs> As your tears come down your cheek, remember me. Yeah, man, by the end of it, it got me. I don't know if it was the final scene in the movie or if it was that all of the scenes that were making me feel emotional kind of built up to that point where I just couldn't hold it back anymore. With so many movies being franchise films and cinematic universes and it's all about the corporate nature. I'm not saying that this ain't trying to be commercial too, but it's nice that something is a commercial mainstream movie that still wants to try to get an emotion out of you or put some heart into you and that's cool. Kudos to Coco. Now for the bad. Yes, there's a couple of bad things about this movie or about some things that happen before you even see the movie. So there is a trope that happens in this movie. There's a little bit of a twist that happens in the middle of it and it's a trope that we have seen in a number of movies and particularly have seen in a number of Disney and Pixar movies in the last few years. This is something that I can specifically say has happened in certain other movies. I won't say what the other movies are because I feel like it might give away what the trope is and I don't wanna spoil it for anybody. It works with the movie, it works with the story, but it's just one of those things where I hope that they recognize that maybe we've dipped into that well a bit too much. We're starting to see a pattern in Disney and Pixar with this. Just, just kind of cut back on that one for a little bit. And particularly in this case because it also leads to something that's really like bad. Like someone did something that was just straight up cruel and everyone's kind of like, how dare you, boo, boo on you. And I'm like, no, that, that was terrible. <laughs> what that person did was absolutely terrible. <laughs> like y'all taking this a little bit too late. And the big problem with the movie is not the movie itself, it's what happens before you see the movie. A 20 minute Frozen short I'm sure it's not the word to use, featurette. A 20 minute holiday special called Olaf's Frozen Adventure. I made a joke about it on Twitter. Someone asked me what I thought about the Frozen short and I wrote basically, wanting to watch a video on YouTube and you get a pre-roll ad that's very long and you can't skip. Why are they together? You know why they're together. We all know why they did it. Disney probably was worried that people who were not of the background of Coco were not gonna go see Coco. So they figured, let's put their cash cow in front of it. Look, the short is not, the short, the featurette, <laughs> the episode is not bad. It's a cute story about Olaf trying to find a Christmas tradition for Anna and Elsa. It has a couple songs in it. It's cute. And I would've been fine with a Frozen short if it was a short. If it was six minutes, fine. I love when they put shorts in front of movies, even if they're not even animated movies. I love when they, back in the day, they used to put like Looney Tunes shorts in front of films. But it's 20 something minutes. It's clearly a holiday special that was supposed to air on TV that probably will air on TV in the future. And I don't know about you guys, but my screening, it wasn't even widescreen. It was 4.3. So that made it even more obvious that this was supposed to be on TV and they stuck it in front of Coco in hopes to bring more people out to see this movie. And I've never seen so many people deliberately come to a movie late. Enough of the nerdy. I love that in the credits of this movie, it tells you to go to the library. I'm not kidding. There's a line in the credits where it's like, Dia de los Muertos is based on Mexican heritage and people's culture. To learn more, visit your local library. Not go to Wikipedia, not Google it, go to the library. <laughs> The library put some money in this. Was there some back end on the library to be like, no one's coming to visit us. We just got that one guy that wants to keep using the computer and we all know what he's doing on that computer. So we could use some more people in the library. Oko, bringing the library back. But yeah, man, I really enjoyed this movie. It was just very, very well done. It paces itself nicely. It's a great story. It's great to see this kind of culture on the big screen done in a positive way in a mainstream film. It's Pixar at its finest. It's a good one to check out. And it's just so beautiful. Just the animation alone is worth the price of admission. See this on a good screen. Did you see Coco? If you saw it, what did you think of it? Or do you plan on seeing it? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, please subscribe. And also ring that bell to be notified of future videos that I make. Be part of that squad by the bell. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000, Chain Chomp Yelp.